Hello, Mixtresses and Mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. Today we are going to do a pick a pile reading. I feel like I haven't done this in a while, so um, bear with me. So, first, so the intention of this pick a pile reading, first of all, like most pick a pile readings on the internet, um, on the YouTubes, this is timeless. I mean, Anytime you find this, there might be some insight for you to tap into. That's how tarot works for me. Like anytime you see these images, the images on tarot and oracle cards, it can, it ha is, has an opportunity at that moment to awaken within you psychological um, recognition for you. So um, I'm going to just do some things like I'm going to light our little spell candle here, which is anointed with some like marigold leaves and, or leaves, petals. <laughs> and I've got a gorgeous black Labradorite. Trust me, it's gorgeous. <laughs> and I'm going to, so I'm going to, right now I'm going to spray some Drusilla, which I like to use as sort of like cleansing spray. It's got peppermint. You can get it on Anamkara Gifts, I believe is what it's called, on Etsy, A-N-A-M, Kara, C-A-R-A. And it is um, based off of the Buffy character, Drusilla. And it's kind of a, kind of a minty jasmine situation. And I'm going to spray it kind of off camera so you're not going to see it, but it's definitely, it's... oh yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. So the intention of this reading is kind of for Thanksgiving. Um, I think I did this last year, like the sort of like extra tensions of like, especially this year, like some of us aren't able to spend time with our family that want to spend time with family. Some of us are still spending time with family when it's and it's a different kind of stress than it usually is because of pandemic reasons there's just i don't need to list for you guys all the reasons why this thanksgiving is particularly hairy um y'all know so i'm gonna light our little candle here with the intention of like grounding us calming us like these last dying embers of 2020 are feeling extra heavy like the weight of the year the optimism that we've put on all year i feel it i feel it kind of we're reaching the end of our ropes at this moment is what i feel sort of collectively so if you're in that boat we're here today to provide some calm grounding energy to take us through not only just right now not only to take us through the end of November, but also to take us through the end of 2020. So these are your pile options. Um, pick either skeleton, vampire, or witch. Um, also, there are different tarot decks associated with each one. Skeleton is Hush Tarot. Vampire is Nightmare Before Christmas Tarot. And witch is Sasurai Bito Tarot. So... If you want to pick based on tarot deck or based on skeleton, vampire, or witch. And my intention is sort of like if you view yourself as these things, you know, which do you see yourself more as a witch or a vampire? Do you see yourself more as a human? Because that's what a skeleton is, a human. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. Yes. I want to light some incense. What do we got here? I'm gonna light one of my random sticks that I have. Hmm, not sure which one this is. Again, our intention for this reading is to provide calm, stability, protection, grounding, I want us to just all be able to feel peaceful. 
and know that you're not alone. It may feel like you're alone right now, but you are not alone. Okay, I think that is a good time. Let me readjust my shot and then we will start with pile one. Okay, if you chose pile one, the skeleton pile, let's get into your reading. So four, this will be your main focus, is strength. This is what both what we want to invoke for you and is kind of the theme of, I would even say maybe your year. It's been about strength for you. It's been about like getting through. So you kind of have four tarot cards. The way that I'm doing this today, you're going to have, let me make sure everybody's on in the shot here. The thing with using your phone as a camera is that like what I'm actually seeing right now is slightly different from what you're seeing. So I believe even though it's not completely on the screen for me, it will be for you. You will have an animal spirit. You will have three kind of slash four tarot cards because this is um, dark goddess tarot. So you're going to get both a goddess on this card and another tarot card. So it'll be kind of your goddess card and the message from your goddess. And then here we have everyday witch oracle. So this is kind of going to be your like practical advice. So let's get into it. We have, this is going to be kind of like a past, present, future, sort of like, I'm thinking probably this will be kind of like a year reflection sort of reading. So we have the tower, 10 of wands, and knight of pentacles. For your goddess, we have la Llorona with five of water slash five of cups. For your animal spirit, this is from the Oracle of the, well, hold on, I have the box here, Oracle of the Strange Forest. You can find it on Etsy, it's gorgeous. So you got Mole as your animal spirit. And then as your everyday witch card, you got Affirmation for Healing the Heart. So this has been a time for you of incredible, blinding, searing grief and pain. And I am so sorry that you've had to go through that. My little skeletons, I am so sorry that you had to go through that, that you're still going through it. I kind of want to, now that I realize that I don't need all this space, I kind of want to Zoom in so you guys can see the cards as much as possible, so hold on. Okay, I don't want you to be scared about this tower card. First of all, let's look at it for a second. This is a situation of the tower moment happened a while ago. These birds are kind of hanging out on this, you know, little tower, whatever, castle that has been decaying for years. There might have even been like a catastrophic event that caused some of this damage, but it happened a long time ago. And I also want to pay attention to sort of the lineage, the lineage, the sort of progression of birds here. So we have birds kind of hanging out here. Like this is just like a nice little gathering of birds, kind of like assessing a situation. I feel these birds here are much more active in the Ten of Wands. They are um, really They're really trying to solve a situation. And then this bird here in the Knight of Pentacles, this bird's got it all fucking together. This bird's ready. This bird is like, okay, we got this. We're okay. So that's kind of the idea that I want to, like, this is almost for you, not as much a reading as it is a validation. I got a hair. I got a hair on the mole. It's a hairy mole. 
<laughs> Sorry. For you, this is much more of a validation than anything else. Like what you've been through, like it's okay if you feel really raw. It's okay if you feel really broken down. It's okay if it feels like your heart is broken. It's okay if it feels like you're overwhelmed and you're just totally, totally grief stricken. For some of you, you literally lost loved ones this year. And I am so sorry that you had to go through that. For some of you, you lost jobs this year. For some of you, this pain, and maybe it's pandemic related, maybe it's not. I'm This reading's for a lot of people, so probably both are true. It's, you've been through a lot. And I think for some of you, you haven't completely faced it yet. And what I mean by faced it is not like, It's not like, I, d I don't feel like there's anything specific that you need to do. I think that what I mean by you haven't really faced it yet, I think in this case, it's more like you haven't fully let yourself admit how much everything has affected you. So I'm almost going to encourage you, if you haven't, if you haven't done a little bit of wallowing, let yourself do a little bit of wallowing. You know, things have been shitty. Um, so that's really the advice that I have for you because like I usually use the Everyday Witch Oracle as the sort of practical advice to help you out right now. And because this is an affirmation for healing the heart, this is a, this is a very validating and stable message. This is kind of like, hey, take some time sit on a couch and cry with your dog, you know, um, let yourself be in this moment, even though it's painful. That's, I feel like that's the wrong thing to say for some of you, but it's the right thing to say for the rest of you. So leave that behind. If you're like, dude, I'm sick of wallowing. This isn't the right message for me. If that's you, then this is just a validation that what you've been through has been really shitty, but you have the strength to see it through. Like, this is the hope. Like, we're seeing this as a past, present, future. Like, in the past, everything really fucking sucked. In the present, you're overwhelmed still. And in the future it's okay. It's going to stabilize. Like the Knight of Pentacles is very much a stabilizing energy. Like things are going to be moving forward at a much steadier and more grounded place. Like if you think of this from an elemental stand standpoint, what we have here is, um, this is a fire card. This is earth. This is earth, water, fire, fire, and earth. You've got a lot of, even though it's been a very difficult time for you, there's a lot of grounded energy potential here. So even if you don't feel grounded, that energy is coming. That sort of like stabilizing of the anxiety is coming. That moving through the grief is coming. So what I want to do is because this is such an incredible guidebook for this dark goddess tarot, which is this card up here, your La Llorona. I want to read from it for your card. So this is your message from your ghosts, guides, and goddesses, as I call it. So the five of water. This is um, the Mexican spirit of grief and remorse is La Llorona. Fresh tears today or bitter tomorrow. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but <laughs> if you want to do a little pause moment, you can read as much of this as you want. The part that I'm going to read right now is when La Llorona appears. Do not agonize over decisions made in the past, even those made out of anger or fear. 
So that's kind of this moment. It is done and the past does not change and you do not want to keep living there. The present holds the only potential for healing. Making a mistake once or twice does not make you bad at something forever. In the same but more serious vein, do not take temporary pain as proof of an eternal burden. So don't make this moment that you've been in of extreme grief and pain and sadness. Don't let it settle in. That's your advice. Okay, let me go back to this. <laughs> Something you must endure on an everyday basis has terms that may be negotiated anew. Stay open to discovering a less painful path of perseverance. That's what this is. This is the less painful path of perseverance in your future right here. Try a homeopathic remedy for what is ailing you. Try homeopathic magic. Cry in the shower and feel the stream of water as your tears. Cry and let your powerful tears break up and wash away pieces of the pain. Let loose the rivers of your tears. A lot about, like a whole paragraph about crying. Um, so I'm going to take that as, I mean, just the fact that I decided to consult the guidebook. <laughs> I'm going to take that as part of your reading. Um, if you haven't, for some of you, this extreme grief and pain that you've been dealing with, you have not let yourself cry yet. And that is what's happening here, for sure. That's what ha what's happening there. We have tears. Tears. This person could even be crying as well. Look at what you do to avoid dealing with pain. Understand what results from this behavior, both in the long and short terms. So this is all about like a balance of how to deal with grief. There's a way that you've been dealing with the grief that you've been feeling that isn't working for you. Maybe you're crying too much. For some of you, you're crying too much. For some of you, you haven't cried yet. Um, find that balance of what you personally need to heal. You have it within you. This strength is yours to grasp. This Knight of Pentacles strength, earthy, grounded strength. And another thing to remember about the tower is the foundation is never gone in a tower card. It's a disruption. It's an abruption. That's my favorite keyword to use for the tower card, abruption. It is something that happens that you don't want to happen, that's chaos, that's out of your control, but it doesn't break down the foundation. The foundation is still there. And particularly with this strength card, which I said already, but I'll repeat it again. Um, in Hush Tarot, it's, did I say strength card? <laughs> Particularly with this tower card in the Hush Tarot, it is, um, it's a situation that happened a long time ago. So I want to give you validation for what you've been going through, but I also want you to not stay here. Don't stay here in this grief. Um, don't like, you know, don't be mad at yourself for how much you've been grieving, but take a deep breath and every day look for a way through. And if today's not the day for that way through, that's okay, but look for it because one day you'll be ready to start walking that path of healing. Okay. That's so what I got for you skeleton babies. Time for pile two which is, which one did I decide was pile two? <laughs> Vampire, vampires pile two. Okay. All right, pile two, here we go. Vampire, emotional intelligence. And then your tarot cards are from Nightmare Before Christmas. And then we also have, this is your goddess card from Dark Goddess, but it's also going to be a tarot card. So it's kind of going to be a message from your ghost guides and goddesses is the way I'll view that. And then this is your animal spirit card from Oracle of the Strange Forest, which you can find on Etsy. And then this is going to be kind of your practical advice from Everyday Witch Oracle. Let's start flipping. 
You've got Lynx for your animal spirit. Siren of Water, which is Knight of Cups, traditionally, which is Aphrodite. So your goddess is Aphrodite, and the message is Knight of Cups. You've got Four of Needles, which is Four of Swords. Temperance. And Four of Candles, which is Four of Wands. And then your um, Everyday Witch card is the Tears of Joy and Sadness. I'll bring a few of these up just so you can see them better. So the links is, the keywords for the links are like visionary and fierce predator. And holding a little fish too. So that kind of ties back to your Knight of Cups slash Siren of Water energy. So your message is kind of um, what you've been through this year. I'm kind of looking at this as sort of like a 2020 how to get through the end of it kind of reading. And just in general for, for this entire video. What I'm seeing with you is that you've created a pretty, a pretty good balance for yourself. Like you have this emotional intelligence and, um, I love, I kind of love that vampire gets the keyword of emotional intelligence, the key phrase, um, because I think that's that along with the temperance and two fours, fours are all about stability. I feel like for you, you've had, you've definitely had some moments where you've been crying out of joy this year and crying out of sadness. You've had some mood swings, but I think at this point you're starting to really balance those mood swings and you're sort of putting it together. And we even have this, you know, temperance is about balancing fire and water usually. And, um, you know, we've literally got you know, the stability of two fours on either side. One of them is air and one of them is fire, but then you've got water here and you've got earth and water here and you've got, you know, vampires are kind of like fire and earth to me. And then this is a water card, but it's, everything's a dichotomy in your reading. My little vampires, everything's a dichotomy. It's all about balancing like, I feel like there's been some extremes, but you've learned to balance them. You're getting to a point where you're on top of balancing these extremes. We even have like, wow, just like, ooh, that's interesting. Just like symbolism wise, she's holding a cup. Of course, temperance, you got two vessels in a temperance card. She's holding like her little cocktail of blood probably. And she's got a mirror. And she's got a fish and they've got candles. Every single figure that we see here is holding something. Except for like the dolphins and the cat. They're the only ones not holding something. That's interesting. So this, this also reinforces the fact that I feel like you figured out how to balance the crazy ass energies that you've been through this year. You are or you're in the process of figuring out how to balance these energies. You have really gained a lot of emotional intelligence this year and you've figured out how to move through it. Um, that's really cool. Like I'm proud of you guys, like a lot. I'm really proud of you. Like, you know, when it's almost like you've learned how to identify your emotions better this year or something is what I'm thinking. Like, you now know, like, if you think of like emotions that you're having as holding something, if you think of it like that, holding something in front of you, just kind of visualizing a way to see your emotions. Um, this is sort of like a metaphor. So you're holding a cup full of fire in one hand and you're holding a cup full of water in the other and you're able I feel like last year at this time, you didn't know 
which you were holding. You couldn't identify the feelings that you were having, but now you can. You have come a long way in like the the journey of your own emotional intelligence, the journey of figuring out how to contain your emotions. I feel like, you know, the fact that we have essentially a knight of cups here, that person has, the way that I see the court cards and the cups, like Paige has no control over their emotions. <laughs> a knight has a little bit more control over their emotions and they're able to offer love to someone else. Um, and the queen and king then have a lot of emotional control. You have stepped up to the next level. I feel like this time last year, your, your moods were all over the place and you didn't know how to identify them. And now we even have, oh my God, we more symbolism going on here that kind of matches up. So Aphrodite's holding a mirror that looks a lot like this mirror, except it's, this one's much bigger and on the wall. Like this person is obviously they're feeling something different than what they're seeing reflected in the mirror. And I think that is kind of a part of your journey. A part of your journey is that you have learned to see yourself and identify your emotions and deal with them better. You have come on a journey. I almost don't even have specific advice for you except that you are you're on a good path to figuring yourself out just keep going okay what I want to do is I because this is an incredible guidebook Dark Goddess Tarot by Ellen Lorenzi Prince that's what this Aphrodite card is from I'm going to read you a little bit from your your Siren of Water card so I'm not going to read this whole thing, but if you want to pause it and read it yourself, here you go. The part I'm going to read is when Aphrodite appears for you. Let me get a drink real quick. Use oils of Aphrodite's favorite flowers or your own as aromatics. Use the flowers themselves, both as offerings to the goddess and as indications of her beauty. So this is the kind of like message from your ghost guides and goddesses. That's how I'm taking this. Being attractive and charming leads to success. Natural beauty or natural warmth makes it easy, but charisma can be developed. Use the mirror, one of Aphrodite's magical tools. Look at the expressions of your face. And that kind of relates to this too. Look at the gestures and stance of your body. Look at your clothing and grooming. See yourself clearly, but in the best light and with the best of intentions. See yourself with the eyes of love. See what you would like to change, what is possible. Try it out, then get it done. Use mirror magic to see the face of your future love. Stand facing a mirror in a darkened room. Look at yourself and say Aphrodite five times. Aphrodite, 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 Aphrodite. Close your eyes, then repeat her name five, five times more. Open your eyes and look for someone to appear over your left shoulder. So this seems like a little too like specific magic for me, but if that resonates with you, go for it. Um, I would personally distill that little paragraph to, to its essence of like, take, I think this is a good practice of self-love looking at yourself in the mirror and choosing like get get past those you know like that sort of like instinctual it's not instinctual we've all learned it but it feels instinctual moment when you look in the mirror and you see something you don't like and you just focus on that go a moment beyond that when you look in the mirror the next time you look in the mirror and refocus on something you do like or make weird expressions in the mirror to like kind of in, encourage yourself to take yourself less seriously, you know, like stick your tongue out at yourself, you know, make weird expressions, move your face around like, like a goddess and admire your beauty. Even like if you're a person that likes to play with makeup, even if you're not going anywhere anytime soon, which most of us aren't, um, take a moment to like really 
put on some makeup. When you get to that point, whenever you're putting on makeup, you know, it's like that drag moment where like you've been putting on makeup for half an hour or so. And suddenly you're starting to feel it, you know, and you start making faces at yourself and, and appreciating the angles and stuff and like turning your face. So you get that bling of glitter of your highlight on your cheekbone or whatever, like spend some time with literal self-love of looking in the mirror. I think it's no accident that like Aphrodite's talking about mirror magic and this um, card has a mirror in it, like mirror magic. Find your own mirror magic. I feel like that, that uh, paragraph I just read in this book was a little too specific for me, um, but find your own version of mirror magic. Okay, so I'm going to continue reading this now. There's two more sentences here, or three. Admit your desire. Constrain it if you will, but do not deny its existence. Decide how you can express it in a safe and honorable fashion. <laughs> it feels like kind of antiquated language. A safe and honorable fashion. Um, so take that with a grain of salt. Creativity combines your essence with passion and beauty and allows you to participate in enchantment. There you go. Like putting on makeup is participating in enchantment. If that's something that you enjoy doing. Do or make or find something you love. So there you, there you go. Aphrodite is all about beauty, but don't think of it subvert what, you know, your instinctual first thought of when, when you hear someone say beauty, like don't think that you're not beautiful. Find your own beauty wherever it lies. You know what I mean? Okay, I think that's good for my little vampire babies. Let's move on to our witches, pile number three. Griffey Weaver of the Worlds. So you've got kind of like an earth and fire energy going on here. We've got Sasurai Bito Tarot as your tarot cards. This is from Dark Goddess and it will be both an extra tarot card which is kind of your message from your ghost guides and goddesses and it also has a goddess on the card. And then your animal spirit is snail. Now what it said in the guidebook about snail was something about stagnation. Um, so there's a, an element of like, you have been allowing yourself some time to rest, but it's going to be time to get moving again soon. And then your, um, everyday witch Oracle card is speak your mind. So for some of you, that's quite literal, like, your advice, but before I even flip over the cards, your advice today, if you picked pile number three, if you picked this witch pile, there's something that you're not saying. There's something that you're holding in and that can cause, that can, not only does it cause like, you know, emotional distress, resentment, things like that, but it can actually cause like real health problems in your future. So you need to express yourself, whether that's at a job, in a relationship, there's something that you're not saying because you're worried about how it's going to be taken. Say it. Action is needed. Remember you are a witch. That's really all I wrote for your like little notes here. That's all I needed to write. Okay, your reading's over. Action is needed. Remember, you are a witch. You are more powerful than you think you are. Your message from your ghost guides and goddesses, Seven of Earth slash Seven of Pentacles, Arush, Arush Kagal. So I'm going to read from the Dark Goddess guidebook at the end so you can get like a little bit more information because that's a nice, nice guidebook. You got Nine of Cups, Three of Wands, and two of wands. So what I get here is like a, st a stuckness quality. You are kind of like hanging out. You've been hanging out in sort of this two and three place, you know, <laughs> this is an air card in this deck. 
but I, I do get some fiery aspects too. Like we almost see these like wands being exchanged. So this is this is almost like another two of wands to me, in a way. And we've got a lot of fire energy here. We got fire, fire, fire and air, fire and earth. That one's earth. This one's earth. And then of course we've got a cup here. So I feel like in most areas of your life, you're feeling like there's like a spark of creativity and passion that you haven't quite taken to the next level. You know, you don't believe yourself to be powerful enough to conjure what it is. I feel like there's like a, you need to bring something into the world. There's a creative project, a creative idea that you have or that you would have if you sat down with yourself and like really talked it out with yourself in whatever way works for you, whether you journal, whether you literally like to talk out loud. There's something, there's some kind of mm, holding back of communication. Like I'm feeling very like tongue tied at the moment. You're holding yourself back. You're not letting yourself have this. This is you. This is you loving yourself and having your full potential. And like, this is such a beautiful card. I love it so much. I think it's, it's definitely one of my favorite cards in this deck. You're not letting yourself have have that moment. You're holding yourself back from that. I feel like you're who you are is here. You're the witch. Look at look at this also, this like parallel between like the glowing, like conjuring of the the flames and the sort of like inner glowing of like self-love going on here. There's a very much a what you really truly love and want to do in your heart is not, you're not conjuring it forth. This is who you actually are, but you're keeping it in for some reason. You're not expressing what you truly want to express. So really my only advice for you is to start bringing that into focus. Like for, this reading is for a lot of people. For some of you, you just need to actually, like there's something you've been needing to say to a specific person. So fucking say it. Figure it out. If that person can't like be with you as you're working it out and as you're trying to express it, um, obviously don't like, you know, be cruel unnecessarily, but get it out. You know, there's that Audie DeFranco song. I think that's your song. <laughs> that's your song today. It's called Out of Me, Onto You. And it's, it, it's about that. It's about like, at some point, it's all going to come out, out of me and onto you. And I think you need that moment. And I haven't even really talked about seven of pentacles being your message from your goddess Ereshkigal. But um, that's a that's a moment of taking a step back and reassessing. So there's a moment of like, and that's kind of like what happens in two and three of wands as well. Like you're almost so the thing about the two of wands is you're picking a path. You have dual passions and it's time to choose which path, right? And then the three of wands is after you've chosen that path, you're kind of like looking through that sacred triangle. You're looking through that portal. I see the three of wands as a portal card. You're looking through that portal. <laughs> That's funny that I just ended up you want to see yourself through the portal as the nine of cups. You want to see all your wishes coming true. You want to see that love of self radiating out from within you. And you have to admit to yourself that you are this witch. So for some of you, like speaking your mind truly means admitting to yourself that you have the power to make, make things come true for you. But there are some things that you've been doing that have been, if we think of this as a linear progression, there are some things that you've been doing that have been taking you from a three back to a two. So you've been taking a step back in some way. And I think it's because you're withholding your, for some of you, you're withholding your gifts from the world. Like you're not 
giving us the creativity that you have within you. You're, you're holding it back for some reason because like it's probably a self-worth thing. Like you don't think you have enough, but you do have enough. You are this beautiful witch. You are this beautiful person here that like all of her wishes are coming true because she loves herself, you know? So there's some things aren't working. That's kind of a seven of pentacles energy in general. Something's not working. So take a step back and figure out which are the things that aren't working and which are the things that are and go forward on your path. Cause you're kind of back at a moment where you need to choose which path again. Like you already chose the path and you were here, but somehow you've come down to here. So that, and that the seven of earth kind of, um, reinforces that for me, like take a step back and look at your choices right now. You can either choose the path that is expressing yourself or you can choose the path that's repressing yourself. I feel, feel like those are the two paths that you have right now. So you just, only you could know which is, which path is the right one, which is the expressing yourself path. And it might be hard to recognize. So I would encourage you to really sit down with a journal, sit down with your thoughts, you know, shut out everything else for a minute and really ask yourself, what do I want? What do I need to say? What do I need to express? Both what do I need to express to a specific person, but also what do I need to express to the world? Okay. Okay. We're going to end this with, I'm going to read from Dark Goddess Tarot Guidebook for your Ereshkigal Seven of Earth. I know I'm probably Ereshkigal. This is the Sumerian goddess of the underworld. And if you would like to pause and read that, I'm just going to read this bottom portion when Ereshkigal appears. Intuitive leaps are the result of powerful but subterranean processes. Look at that. Intuitive leaps. That's what you need to take. Girlfriends, boyfriends, other friends, take that leap. Trust the one that emerges from the depths over the one coming at you from left field. There you go. Those are your two paths. One emerging from the depths and one coming at you from left field. So the one that feels like the one that you need to go down to protect your, choose the path that you love, not the path that you fear not taking. You know what I'm saying? Though the consequences may not be apparent or just, certain rules cannot be broken and some should not be broken. No which or which. Success does not come from intemperate, intemperate, intemperate. I don't know if I've seen that word before. I'm assuming it means like not balanced because temperance is balance. Intemperate or injudicious action. Success does not come from intemperate or injudicious action. So be balanced, be mindful. Symbols can lose meaning and omens become lost if attention is not paid. Keeping a record over time reveals patterns at work. See, it, you need to journal. You guys need to journal. Make a list. If you're a pro-con list person, do it. Discoveries await you. Keep digging. When magical tools have lost their power and purity, recharge them by burial in the earth for seven days before cleansing and reconsecration. That was an interesting little like um, moment of advice right there. Um, like literally bury something in the earth for seven days and then dig it back up. If that resonates with you, go for it. This is a time of reassessment. Take a step back and reassess because you have what it takes. You are a divine, beautiful conjuring witch and you can make it happen for yourself. You can make all your dreams come true, but you do need to express yourself. Um, but you may not know what you need to express. So that's the taking a step back part. All right. That's everything for my little witches, vampires, and skeletons. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your November. And not that I won't be back because y'all know I do like three videos a week at this point. Um, and I hope that you are all doing well and that you will continue to do well and do even better. You guys are the best. Bye. Take care of yourselves.
seriously, seriously, take, take, take care of yourself. Okay.